Oh man, well good morning everyone. 
I want to welcome you to Elkton United Methodist Church. And well, it is good to finally be back with you in person. Uh, the last time I was with you all in worship was nearly a month ago on April the 24th, if you can believe it. And I really don't recommend experiencing COVID twice in the same month. It wasn't a fun experience, though the symptoms were mostly mild. Uh, I had 16 total days of quarantine uh, with a three-day break in between the two uh, cases. And uh, what I experienced was a rare COVID relapse um, that was a side effect from the antiviral drug Paxlovid, which I was on. Uh, in rare cases, apparently, you can have a relapse where you experience COVID all over again. So, yeah. But I am feeling great now, and it's awesome to be with you here and to be able to worship finally in person. And I hope that your hearts are ready to worship too. It is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and so the good news of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is still fresh on our hearts. Uh, so will you please pray with me in a moment of silence as we prepare our hearts for worship. If you are able, will you please stand for the call to worship? We come this morning full of ourselves. Our concerns, our plans, our opinions, our schedules. In this moment, help us to deny ourselves and make space for you. Enable us to put down our priorities, to set aside our assumptions and our schemes. Open our hearts to recognize your work and your will. Reassure us of your divine vision and let us rest in your unending care.
How easy we can learn of God's love, but how hard it is to live it. The world distracts us with its easy choices while we know how intentional we must be to love one another. Join me as we confess our struggles in serving the Lord as open our hearts to God's grace. Because you dwell in our hearts, eternal God, you know how the anger, the pain, the bitterness of our lives crowds you out. The noise of the world deafens us with our words. We want our children to be good and kind and gentle to others. Then they hear us call others' names and speak of them with demeaning words. Our desire for revenge towards those who have hurt us shows that your peace indeed is not in us. You promised new heaven and a new earth, so renew our hearts too. Shattered by our sin, your perfect heart can still feel our brokenness. whispers to us of your mercy, your hope, and your love. The word which can transform us is not some idle gossip, but good news for us. It fills us with forgiveness, equips us for service, and sends us forth to love others as God loves us. In our midst, the Holy Spirit teaches us all we need to know. Gives us what we need in order to be faithful. And fills us with peace through repentance. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. The New Testament reading today is from Acts chapter 16, verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a great straight course to Samothrace and the following day to Neapolis and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and also a Roman colony. We, remind, we remained in this city for some days. <clears throat> On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer and we sat down and spoke to the woman, women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Ty at Atira and a deal, dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us saying, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
That was beautiful. Thank you all very much. We have such talent in our music department, don't we? The gospel lesson today is from um, the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 23 through 29. If you are able, will you please stand for the reading of the gospel? Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but it is from your Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace, I leave you with, I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I'm going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I'm going to see the Father because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. You may be seated. And today I'm preaching on our New Testament lesson, uh, but I want to share a brief story with you. Um, Michael Billister uh, visited a small town in Poland back in the late 1930s. It was shortly before World War II began, and we all know how uh, Poland uh, was affected by World War II. And he met a man in the village there that he was visiting, and he had a meaningful conversation with him over a few hours. And he ended their time together by gifting this man a Bible. And of course, the man was eventually uh, converted to faith in Jesus Christ from that encounter uh, and from the reading of that Bible. But he then passed that Bible on to others because it was rare to find printed scriptures uh, there in Poland in those days. And so he passed the Bible on to others who were also converted until nearly 200 people in that community had become believers uh, through it. Um, and when Billister returned to the little town in 1940, uh, this group of Christians, they met together uh, for worship. They had begun a little church and he was to preach there. And he thought of asking them uh, to get, come up and give testimonies, but this time he suggested that several in the audience come forward and recite uh, Bible verses. And one man asked, well, perhaps you, we've misunderstood, but did you mean verses or chapters? And uh, these villagers, they were so wrapped up in the scriptures and they had such an impact on them that they had not just memorized a few select verses of the Bible, but they were actually memorizing full chapters and even books. Thirteen people knew the entire book of Matthew by heart, and another person had committed to memory the Psalms. 
Uh, so that single copy of the Bible given by Billister had sunk deeply into the community and the hearts of those who had received it. Um, and the surprising results of that one small Bible had borne fruit you know, in a pretty major way. Um, so who wants to come up here and recite from their hearts the book of Matthew? Any, any takers? <laughs> well, don't worry, I can't do it either. So. <laughs> uh, but we know uh, from the, um, you know, the, the Israelites and the Jewish people that they used to memorize, uh, near, there, there were people who would memorize nearly the entire Old Testament if you can believe it, because uh, these were oral traditions that were passed down. And when you didn't have access to the printing press and uh, books like that, it, it was indeed possible for people to memorize entire books of the Bible. I can't fathom that, how much work that would take, how much commitment that would take, uh, but that is a profound commitment. Um, and we shouldn't be surprised too much by the fact that um, in our New Testament lesson today we uh, find um, another person who is impacted by a chance encounter. Um, and with all the big surprises found in the book of Acts, um, it's interesting to find this little story of Lydia uh, that's recorded uh, in the book of Acts. And her story uh, begins with that chance encounter with Paul. He thought he was coming to Philippi uh, to minister to some men there. Instead, he found women that he uh, encountered. And the story begins, of course, with a detour because Paul had this vision that uh, the man from Macedonia was pleading for his help. Um, and however, when Paul arrives, uh, he finds these group of women. And this is kind of surprising given the culture of the times. It was a very patriarchal society. And oftentimes, stories um, weren't shared from a woman's perspective or w stories about women uh, were rare to find. Uh, and this adds a lot of credibility to the scriptures that these stories exist. Um, and despite it being in an extremely patriarchal society, it, women are elevated in their faith in uh, both uh, the Gospel of Luke and uh, the book of Acts, who we presume had the same author. And so we find out that when Lydia becomes a follower of Christ, uh, that her whole family is impacted. Her whole household uh, is baptized. And a new spark of faith is ignited there in Macedonia, in the uh, and Philippi, uh, that potentially could uh, spark and spread into a blaze. Um, and we know from uh, the history of the scriptures, too, that Paul made um, visits to Philippi, too, and wrote letters to them. Uh, we have the book of Philippians. That was a letter from Paul to the church in Philippi. And so why, though, in a book of big miracles and major events, events do we find the story of one woman coming to faith? Well, you know, why bother to give her story top billing here uh, among dramatic and, and these dramatic and stunning events that are happening in the early church where the Holy Spirit is moving in mighty ways? Well, the truth is that God has always worked to change the world one life at a time. And Lydia, just like the rest of us, has a choice of whether to listen and follow what she hears about God's word. Uh, and she does open her heart and then her home to the message of the gospel. And who knows what will happen in Philippi uh, because of her conversion. It, it might be like Michael who planted that seed of faith in that village in Poland that resulted in a church being established there. Well, maybe the same thing will happen there in Philippi, but even if, even if it's just Lydia and her household who experienced conversion in Macedonia, uh, for Paul, it was worth his detour. And yes, Paul had a plan. He had an itinerary that's laid out for us uh, in the scriptures that tell us of where Paul intended to go. 
And this is a detour from that itinerary. Uh, however, the adventurous nature of his mission is kind of put on display here for us, which is pretty interesting uh, and important, in fact. The fact that Paul is free to move outside his plan to follow God's leading and direction is vital for us to understand. <coughs> Excuse me. And the fact that this major detour isn't so that he could necessarily see thousands of people converted, but it's for a single household. It reveals to us how much God cares about his people. That just as Christ left the 99 behind to go and find that one lost sheep, Paul has left his plans behind to go to Lydia. We serve a personal and loving God who goes out of his way for us. God is relational. God is near to us. God desires to love us and to be loved by us. Therefore, are we, having been created in the image of God, we are relational beings as well. And just as God wants to be in relationship with us, we need that relationship and connection with God and that relationship and connection with one another. And I think this is why Paul's missionary work and his ministry style is so effective uh, and the early church is so successful. Paul and the early Christians, they didn't just go and preach in these towns, but they shared their lives with the people. You know, they were welcomed into the people's homes and they spent time with them and they got to know them. And I love how Lydia's invitation to Paul and the other Christians is worded here. It says, she prevailed upon them. How could they resist? Surely they would enjoy meaningful fellowship, not to mention food and drink and uh, genuine Christian love together. They enjoyed the same things that we enjoy today, the things that are most meaningful to us today, these relationships. And you see, building relationships with the people of our community is just absolutely vital. As I shared last week, knowing our neighbors so that we can love our neighbors, it should be one of our chief priorities in our life. We love others because God first loved us. But we must make space for the kinds of detours that we see taking place here in our scripture, where Paul is willing to go off script, he's willing to take a detour off his itinerary to go to Philippi. We need to have that space in our lives, too, to be able to connect with people in that same kind of way. People are supremely important to God, and so they should be the most important part of our lives, too. Other things can wait, you know, if someone needs our help, we make space and time to help. If someone needs to talk, we make that space to talk and share our lives with them. If someone needs prayer, we make that time and that space to pray. And as you can see on our prayer list in our uh, bulletin insert, we have a lot of people who need our prayer. We make space to fellowship and to worship together, to be with one another. And sometimes a meal with a neighbor is more important than working that extra hour. And sometimes stopping to chat in the grocery store is more important than making it home to watch the big game or to watch your favorite TV show. And consider some of the chance encounters that you've had in your lives. And if you think back, you might think of some interesting ones that, you know, resulted in lifelong friendships. I have my best friend who means the world to me because of a chance encounter where I sat next to someone who was at the time a stranger. You know, I took a risk and sat next to someone I didn't know when I could have sat next to someone I did know. And sure enough, a lifelong uh, friendship blossomed out of that. Who would have known? I have lived the last 15 years of my life here in Maryland, even though I'm from Ohio, 
uh, because I had a chance encounter with a job description on the internet. I took that tangent and went down that road. Uh, it was way outside my church parameters, but I started reading about the little waterman community known as Crisfield, Maryland. And uh, sure enough, my life changed forever when I got a job there as a youth director, as a youth pastor. I took that chance. I've had opportunities like Paul to share my testimony and my faith and chance encounters too, like when I met a person in London, England, uh, while I was there on vacation, and I was walking the streets, and we ended up going and getting a cup of coffee together, and we had a great conversation and a good time, and we still keep in touch to this very day. And our lives are so structured, though, uh, that these chance encounters are pretty rare, aren't they? We're so busy and rushed that we oftentimes don't have time for these kinds of detours. And I think that in many ways, we are constrained from being able to follow God's leading in our lives. And we can't fathom living our lives like Paul, where he is so free to change up his schedule. And Michael Billister's story of the little town in Poland, it reminds us, though, that the faithfulness of one person's life can change another's profoundly. One little Bible shared, one faithful risk-taking for God's kingdom. It can be a seemingly tiny little thing that can shake the foundations of entire communities. We don't know how much of an impact one chance encounter is going to have on someone's life if we are being faithful to God and following God's leading and loving God's people. And as we look at the big surprises God has brought into being in Acts, all these amazing events and miracles, and we see how God is working even in our world today, we see these kinds of things happening. And we need to remember that, a, that changed hearts, a single changed heart, is a major event. And heaven celebrates those big, those little tiny things that seemingly seem so uh, little to us, but they can shake the foundation of an entire community. And so we need to remember to build our lives around people and to leave space for them to prevail upon us, to welcome people into our homes. And God seeks after each and every one of us. And that's God's grace, that God doesn't just wait for us to come to him, but rather he, God loves us so much that God initiates the activity. Uh, God comes to us, and oftentimes God does that through other people, like how we see that Paul is God's missionary to Lydia. I think that God wants to be a missionary through you to other people as well. And God wants us to be uh, his missionaries here in Elkton each day in the moments we have and the, and the moments that we make. And it, it can be as simple as initiating a conversation with your neighbor uh, when you see them working outside in the garden or inviting them to a Sunday brunch. Yes, maybe you've never invited your neighbors over for dinner. Well, maybe now is a good time to do it. Maybe you've never connected with the people on your street. Well, maybe now is a good time to walk your street to get to know the people. And we have a whole community of people to love here in Elkton. Yes, many people who are different from us, just like Lydia was very different from where Paul, uh, you know, his culture and their cult and Lydia's culture were, were completely different cultures, and yet they came together and profound things happened as a result of that. So may we love our neighbors enough to be willing to make detours from our plans too so that we might be the missional people that God is calling us to be. Amen.
As we come to a time of prayer, I'll ask you to get your uh, prayer lists out, and I have some names and some information to share with you so you'll be ready to pray more this coming week. Uh, would you include Ina Andrews, who's, who had some difficulty with the, the same ankle that she's had some problems with before? Continue to pray for our secretary and her family as they recover from COVID. Doesn't sound like they were quite as lucky as you, were they? <laughs> well, I wasn't very lucky. Well, well, you're here. <laughs> uh, if you would uh, pray for uh, David Hatfield, Lucille Russell's brother-in-law, uh, and Barb Pinder is having a shoulder replacement on Friday. And also please add Norma King on the death of her husband, Alan. Norma is the niece of Millie and Romy Jones. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. And now we take time to rejoice in your abundance and say thanks to you. Thanks for healing. Thanks for success and achieved help with your achieved achievements with your help. If, but if we are truthful, God, right alongside of our thanks, we must confess that we do not always live as we appreciate your many, many blessings. Forgive us when we allow ourselves will to rule over your will for us. Lord, there are many people who need our prayers of intercession. So we ask you to bless those who are ill, those who are lonely, those who grieve, and those who suffer from addictions. And Lord, with more and more world problems, we are frustrated and find it difficult to deal with what is before us. We stare at the fuel gauge in our cars when some of us can remember that gas was available for less than 25 cents a gallon. We don't understand why Ukraine is being bombed by a country wanting to overtake a peaceful land because of hate and greed. Help us, God, to recognize what is giving on the inside, what is going on in the inside of ourselves when this happens, and to take the deep breaths, as well as lift needed prayers. We all have those times when we hit a life's detour, but we can plug in our t power tools with our prayers, our email prayer chain, our bulletin list of friends and families needing prayer warriors help. We are confident that this will enable us to move ever closer to you and that assurance which you alone can give. It is with adoration we lift our prayers to you, Lord, for your love can span any distance and your light can guide us through any darkness. Guide us now on our walk with you, Father, and as we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, we turn now to a time of announcements. Um, there is, of course, an insert in your bulletin uh, that includes some of the announcements in more detail and also the prayer list there. And uh, I want to encourage you to take the, that insert home with you as a reminder, but also uh, that you might pray over those names daily that are listed there in the prayer list. I also want to thank you for your tithes and offerings. You can continue to give to our church uh, through our church website at elktonumc.org or uh, by sending your offering in uh, to our church office or there's an offering plate in the back of the church near the sanctuary doors where you can drop your offering if you would like to as you leave today. Also, if you or someone in your family is graduating this year, any kind of graduation, high school, college, graduate school, please let us know. Um, we will be recognizing graduates during the worship services on June the 12th. Uh, so please send an email into the church office, and that email address is printed there in your bulletin insert. Um, there's the opportunity to send in some pictures and some information, and we need all of that information in the pictures by May the 29th. So make sure you uh, check out that it, uh, the announcement that's there on the insert in a little bit more detail and send that email. Also, I'm planning on teaching Financial Peace University, uh, which is a biblically-based personal finance class that it really did change my life uh, on leaving college. I was able to fortunately uh, get out of college debt, and uh, I'm just so blessed by Financial Peace University, which allowed me to experience financial freedom. And so we are going to be offering that class, and it's great for people of all ages. So I encourage you to sign up if you're interested. There's a sign-up sheet down in the hospitality area on the bulletin boards there. Uh, please sign up there as you leave today if you would like to participate in the class. Um, also, uh, there's a link in the Friday email that was sent out this past Friday that has uh, a link to the sign up for the class too. Um, there's, it requires a certain number of people to sign up to be able to have the class. Uh, so we'll make a determination uh, tomorrow whether or not we're able to have the class, but they will be Wednesday night uh, starting at 6.30 uh, p.m. All right, well, that's all the announcements I wanna highlight for you this morning. I do wanna invite you to stand with me if you are able. And we're going to close out our service by singing, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah.
Our God, who is gracious, sends us out to be blessings. With our hearts, we will sing God's praises. With our hands, we will serve God's people. We will comfort all whose hearts are troubled. We will go to help all who cry out to us. We will work for justice for all who are oppressed. And we'll, we will teach songs of hope to all who despair. We will strive to be the hands and feet of Christ. Amen. Amen. 